Uh, hi, uh, my name is Gary Gall. I'm a, a professor and also an extension specialist with Ohio State University South Centers in Piketon. Today I'm going to talk about a couple things. Uh, uh, first one is, uh, is uh, a bulletin. I'm very proud to announce that uh, uh, this one is called the Midwest Home Fruit Production uh, well, Midwest Home Fruit Production Guide. It's Ohio State University Extension Bulletin 940. It's really a neat uh, reference, and as you can tell, there are many, 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 many neat pictures and diagrams and all that. Uh, and uh, well, the good news is, uh, uh, this uh, particular bulletin has been uh, named as the winner for the book category. Uh, well, the national winner in the book category by American Society for Horticultural Science. Uh, so I'm very, very proud of uh, this particular, particular fact. It was also named the national winner for the book division uh, by National Association of County Agriculture Agents, or NACAA. So it's a very good bulletin, and, and uh, also consumers loved it. Uh, we have sold, uh, I would say, about 5,000 copies and uh, all over the country, about probably 30-some uh, states. So that's our bulletin, and if you uh, would like to purchase a copy, you can always uh, uh, Google uh, Midwest Home Fruit Produ Production Guide, uh, and then Ohio State University Extension, and, and then you can order it uh, online. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, another thing that's a little bit different. And I do quite a bit of research on, on, on mostly berry crops and fruit crops. Today, this crop is uh, this plant is kind of a little bit different. Uh, uh, the name of the plant uh, it's called aronia. Uh, for people who uh, kind of like like fancy words, so that would be aronia. For people who like uh, prefer uh, common names, and this would be called black chokeberry. So aronia sounds a whole lot more whole lot more exciting than than black chokeberry. Uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, there are quite a few. Uh, uh, fruits are quite dark and uh, uh, they have a lot of antioxidants uh, so it's a very good uh, uh, good uh, food source or fruit source uh, for uh, for health and you know, health related uh, uh, whether chemicals or phytochemicals uh, so it's a very neat crop to to have uh, uh, right now it's being uh, researched quite a bit by uh, by all kinds of researchers and all, all the way from ornamental horticulture folks uh, uh, to folks who, who work on functional uh, functional foods. So right now it's kind of mid, uh, uh, mid July and the fruits are not uh, completely uh, ripe yet. Uh, I, I can tell you uh, that while well, the fruits uh, don't necessarily taste that great uh, so you kind of have to uh, turn them into more like baked goods and, and process the fruits. Maybe I'll do this in front of the camera. Let's see if I'll, uh, what I'll do. No, oh, it's pretty interesting. It's getting a little bit sweeter, but it's still quite, uh, quite astringent. So it's a pretty, so I would say it's not something that you would go out and buy, you know, buy 10 pounds and eat everything in one sitting. So. So I would say it, uh, I would uh, turn them into more like uh, baked goods, and this particular plant, as you can tell, it's more of a uh, more of a, a, a smaller shrub, kind of kind of rounded. Uh, in spring, uh, in spring, uh, we uh, uh, right now the you know you have you have quite quite a few fruits. In spring, you have tiny, well, the not necessarily tiny, uh, kind of medium size and. Uh, flower clusters with a bunch of uh, white flowers. Very, very interesting, uh, very interesting plant. So this particular plant, uh, uh, you could use it as a landscape shrub uh, with uh, decent flowers. Early in the season, the flowers are very, very bright and, and, and leaves are, qu are quite glossy. Right now, they don't look that hot. Actually, in July, most things don't really look that great in our landscape. But anyway, so they will, uh, they will stay like this for quite some time, and then fruits will be completely ripe sometime around late August and, and early September. So this is your Aronia. Uh, well, the botanical name is Aronia Carpa. 
It's uh, called black aronia. So you can grow it as, a, as an ornamental shrub, or you can also grow it uh, to, to make uh, baked goods or functional foods and health foods and all that. It's just a fantastic plant. And I love it quite a bit. And hopefully uh, you have, have, have a little bit of room to put this into your landscape. And, and one kind of misnomer is uh, uh, because it's called uh, black chokeberry, uh, I was told uh, that chokeberry, uh, while well, the berries would choke birds, and so they do. Uh, in theory, they do not like that. Uh, as you can tell right now, uh, birds do not like them yet. Uh, however, when they when they become completely ripe, and uh, birds will still love them, and I kind of found out the hard way. Uh, one year we were going to harvest some fruits, and and uh, I told uh, told my research assistant. Uh, Oh no, we don't need to put netting over this and birds do not like them. Wrong. Uh, a day later, birds wipe them out. So like, when they're like this and birds do not like them, but when they, uh, when they are 100% uh, ripe, the birds will love them. So this is a, a black chokeberry or, or aronia. If you have more questions, you're welcome to give me a call or refer to uh, bulletins like this or or refer to our extension website and there are also many many uh, fact sheets on Aronia online and uh, actually the leading uh, uh, there are other universities that do quite a bit of research uh, University of Connecticut and Iowa State and and they do quite a bit of research and and then in Iowa I guess farmers have planted uh, somewhere around 1,000 acres of Aronia uh, in Iowa. So that's a lot of Ronia. Uh, anyway, so this is it for now. Uh, thank you very much.